So Jordan Belfort is, is of course, the, the, the Wolf of Wall Street. And the Wolf of Wall Street, um, you know, I, I happen to have a, a, a first-hand knowledge of what was going on at Stratton Oakmont. Uh, I lived out on Long Island and was working out on Long Island in, in the 80s. And I was a young guy. I was in my, my 20s. I would have been prime for the guys he was trying to recruit. He, he grabbed all these young guys that were filled with youthful testosterone and desire to, to drive the fancy cars and have the, the pretty women. And those were his target audience guys that he would go after. And, and, and he set up Stratton Oakmont in Lake Success. And I was running a, a dealership that we owned, a PS Honda. I was a sales manager. And that was uh, two towns over. And so a lot of my friends and colleagues actually went to work there for a short period of time. And the stories they told me were unbelievable, meaning I did not believe them. They, they talked about prostitutes and cocaine on Fridays. And I'm like, come on. The guy said, I, I got to get out of there. And I thought my friend Christian, who was telling me about it, I thought he just couldn't cut sales. And he was making up these stories. But, but later on, I came to find that it was actually true. And I, I went to meet him one day at the uh, parking lot. And the parking lot looked like a parking lot at a billionaire's club. There was. Uh, uh, Ferraris and uh, Porsches and Lamborghinis, and these were young guys. I'm like, what the heck are they doing? I just smelled that something couldn't be right uh, with that. And in fact, one of the guys, I asked him, how's the market today? And he's driving fancy cars and wearing an expensive suit. And he goes, I don't know. I go, well, what stocks do you like? He's like, I don't know. I go, well, how the heck? He goes, well, that's not what we do. You know, we, we do something different. And he, he really didn't want to elaborate. I remember telling uh, a friend of mine at the time, Something, something's not right here. But the, the real benefit, though, this, this guy really knew how to run a boiler shop operation where they get on the phone and, and, and actually sell stock. And can you imagine making a cold call to somebody and convincing them to give you their money? That's got to be the most difficult call to make. And what I want our team to get is, uh, is, is to actually handle people that call us better. And they're calling us because they want information, they want to buy a car, or they want a service. And to really get that way of getting that information out of the customer to connect what they are looking to do and what lo we're looking to do to make that connection on a completely different level. Because I think, you know, w Julian and I talk about it all the time, the challenge with automobile people is similar people from similar backgrounds looking at similar opportunities to come up with similar solutions. And so I want to look outside of that. You know, wh what do the guys on Wall Street do? And uh, my friend uh, Mark, who's here, and Mark's a little cuckoo, but Mark, uh, before he became a broker, he used to have to make 250 calls in the morning before his broker got in at 9 o'clock in the morning. 250 cold calls before 9 a.m. And every single day. And he starts saying, what if our people were making 250 cold calls a day? What would that do for the company? So I'm hoping uh, by having our, our leadership crew go to the meeting to awaken them a sense of possibility.